Sometimes you gotta tear down if you're gonna build up. This 1924 school is hiding a salvage jackpot and a mystery hidden in its very walls. You ready? We'll turn classroom classics into one of a kind display shelves. Hey, I like that. And we're rolling back the clock, making a brand new chapel look old. Oh, this one looks hot. It looks sharp. Every old building might hide a fortune in treasure. Stuff's popping at it everywhere. Every time you go back, you find something new. From doors to mantles to fixtures, there are big rewards if you know where to look. That's what we call recycling the past. I'm Matt White. Along with my brother Josh and my father Steve, we have a family-run architectural salvage business. We sell some of what we find as is, and some we reinvent to use in other jobs, where whatever we can imagine is the limit. At our salvage yard, we've stockpiled a ton of cool stuff from old buildings slated for teardown. Some of it gets reused in projects for clients looking for something really special. Like this job for Ed Bixby. Hey, Matt! Yo! He's really got a one-of-a-kind restoration. This 320-square-foot chapel. Ed owns the 300-year-old Steelman Town Cemetery. Yeah, it's kind of eerie, but it's filled with history. The original chapel is long gone. There's a new one under construction. It's a replica of one built in 1910 that burnt down about 50 years later. We're going to help Ed give it some early 20th century character. But this isn't just any cemetery. It's a natural burial ground uh, located in the state forest. No vaults, no embalming fluid. Basically going back to nature. Oh, very cool. So we definitely need some naturally cool materials. First, wood for flooring. This particular floor here is the thicker board. The tongue and grooving is good. You know, just gotta scrape a little right. bit of the, uh, the schmutz out there. But the floor is just for starters. What do we need for the pulpit? I just need a couple 42 inch railing systems for each side of the pulpit. I got some old porch railing. It'll pretty much work for everything you need, I think. The chapel needs windows that will add to the period feel. I got a batch of these somewhere. Granted, they're sold in pairs, but what about just putting singles in like this? I actually like the singles better. I think that would fit the chapel. Finally, some massive beams. Wow. Now these these are more more like what I'm looking for. You recycle the dead, we recycle the, the dead wow. people's stuff. <laughs> I've got some great ideas brewing for Ed's chapel. But first, we get ready to head up to another job. And it's a really good one. I finally got the okay to go up to that school in the Atlantic Highlands after oh. I don't know how many months of waiting, but uh, so there's cool. chestnut doors, trim, chalkboards, oh. all sorts of stuff. Chalkboards. That's sounds really yeah, my favorite. My I favorite. think you love that stuff. Let's Rock go. and roll, baby. Less than two hours later, we're at an old convent school slated for teardown. This is the St. Agnes School, built in 1924. There's a lot of neat stuff here. Let me show you around here. Ladies first. This place is salvage heaven. This is a good cool. 25,000 square feet of stuff in great condition. Yeah, look at this. We got a lot of good tin ceiling in here. This is a good cool old reef pattern. It's a pretty unique print. Tin tiles can be hard to reuse in ceilings, but they make great decorative objects. There are hundreds of styles and sizes of tin ceilings. Tiles with ornate patterns in the best condition might run close to $20 to $25 each. Less ornate or damaged tiles might grab as little as $5 to $10 each. And look at these. Look at this. Big sheets. Huge old blackboards can be reclaimed into something really killer. Well, these slates are nice, man. We can make some tables or even cut them real small and you can make uh, countertops. Let's go to the truck and get our tools and sure. get going. You want to learn how to make some really cool stuff out of salvage materials, go to DIYNetwork.com. Coming up, the school reveals an 80-year-old mystery. Holy mackerel. Hey! And the cemetery gets a new look and a new life. It just looks like 1910 all over again.
we collected some great stuff for a new chapel we'll be giving an old soul to. And we're salvaging great finds from a convent school that's slated for demolition. The tin ceilings are coming down. So now we got this old tin ceiling here. The tin ceiling, it's a pressed tin. They'd have a giant kind of a reverse mold. And they'd press it right in and it would take the tin and kind of extrude it into these design patterns. So the big thing is you gotta figure out their overlap. Probably it's almost like doing flooring. You find what end they started putting it in with, and then you go to the other end and work your way back. Yeah, see, this is where it overlaps a little bit, but you see all this here? It's a dirty job, but totally worth it. The whole thing about tin is to try to get it down without completely ruining it. You don't really want anything with a hole in it because that decreases the value. Oh. Alright, there we go. Sometimes what we'll do is we'll take these, we'll take four of them, which is basically acres out of two sheets. We'll build a two-by-four framework on the inside and make a tree planter out of it or a coffee table, all sorts of different stuff. Alright, let's get some of this chalkboard. The blackboards are a real find. There are endless ways to use the slate, but it's fragile. It calls for careful handling. Three there? Yeah. Alright, we're gonna pick it up. We're going to have to go up and straight down. One, two, three, up, straight down. One, two, three. Hey, hey. Not bad. Not too shabby. Slate blackboards can run about $50 to $75 a slab based on size and quality. They were eventually replaced by green steel and porcelain boards, which raise less chalk dust. You don't get this stuff for free. We always pay for salvage rights, and it's a lot of work but we could net close to $1,000 from all the stuff we found, including these interior windows. Right now I am unscrewing the hinge that is holding this transom window in here. These are pretty nice windows. They're not painted. They got uh, nice wavy glass in them. If you're doing a sun porch or doing a divider between two rooms, you could basically put these all together, stack them one on top of another, two by four it out, kind of the way they did it here, and have yourself a whole divider in the house. Outside, there's something I just can't wait to get my hands on. All right, so here we got the date stone or cornerstone. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this out. Sometimes people would use these as a kind of time capsule but you never know till you remove them. We're gonna chip this out real carefully here, not to chip the face of the limestone. You really gotta do a good job on this kind of stuff because limestone chips really easily. I use a chipping hammer carefully around the box and place a support board underneath. But is there anything hidden inside or not? Is that money? It was. Oh, there's a, ooh, look at that. Oh, wow. Coins. A coin of each denomination. A Liberty Head dollar, which is kind of cool. This is a Golden Jubilee, 1874 to 1924, Reverend DJ Dugan. A lot of times in these uh, boxes, what they'll do is they'll put the heading, the newspaper clipping, basically, for the day. Night. July 27th, 1924. So that was probably the day that this was set. 85 years ago. Very cool. We're ready to roll. We have the chapel job waiting, and I have an idea for some of the cool stuff we found in the school. Coming up, blackboards get turned into something the teachers never dreamed of. Be a good contract. Looks cool. Okay, we're done. Cool. And we're given new construction the vintage treatment. It's fun working with salvage materials, isn't it? It's different. It's much different.
we hit the mother load with a fantastic salvage haul from a 1924 convent school. We're reusing some of the finds to make some major display shelves using old slate blackboards. So what I want to do is take, like basically build like an H. We're going to build an angle iron box framework and then on the edge, probably just drill quarter inch holes and we'll get bolted in on the sides. It'll just look kind of, it'll be kind of an industrial flare Pulling the chalkboard down. I mean, trying the chalkboard, chalkboard's gonna be hot. I mean, it'll right. be great. It's gonna be basically a bookshelf, so it'll work in anybody's home, but I wanna put it in the shop for right now. I have some monster boards for the sides of the shelf unit. There you go, put some muscle into it, son. Man, this is the never ending board. Oh, hang on, hold it upright. A chop saw will make easy work of this white pine, which is pretty soft. If it was yellow pine, it would give the saw a run for its money. Okay. Can you count yeah. the rings on that, baby? I don't know if I can count that high. Yeah, gosh. This is some old, uh... That's some old nets gotta man. be. Man. That was a big tree, dude. Yeah, I think. To get a beam this size, the tree must have been close to 70 feet tall. How tight those grains are, man. Gosh. That's some beautiful stuff. Two more. The slate we got from the old school is thin and really breakable. So we handle it with care. Slice it up like a big loaf of bread. We're gonna bring this over. Get underway. Well, this kicks off a lot of dust, so I'm gonna make sure I got my safety goggles, my glasses, and my mask. We're using a diamond tip blade here. Could be a good contrast. Looks cool. Okay, we're done. Cool. Here's some of the uh, two-inch angle I was talking about. Okay. We should cut these at a 45. We're making the frame for the shelving out of salvaged iron. We cut the two-inch metal at a 45-degree angle. The slate shelves should fit right in. We use C-clamps to hold it in place as we weld the metal frame together. All right, so that's the end of that. On to the next step. This is basically one of the last steps in finishing up the bookcase undercarriage. Our slate, chalkboard slate, will sit on top of this. It'll flip over, we're gonna bring our uprights out, which is the three by 12 pieces of wood, fold it all together. We had to kind of fabricate these little bad boys together using a bunch of one inch stock. This will be a nice tie. This is going to hold the top and the bottom of the wood together. It's going to look really cool. We'll prep the frame for assembly by drilling holes for lag screws. Okay. Use the center punch basically to start your hole. A carbide metal bit does the job. Use a little bit of oil basically to lubricate and cool down the drill bit. Oh, it's coming through. There you go. Good job. All right. All right, finish all I think was three eighths. That work. The massive boards look pretty good as they are, but I'm going to give them a little bit more finesse. So I got myself here a citrus wax. It's kind of like a beeswax. It puts a finish. It's got a golden oak stain in it. So it puts a finish on the wood. It's going to protect it. It also cuts down on the splinters. It's kind of an English finish to this kick-ass shelf we're building here. So now we got our wood wax ready to go. Got all my holes lined up. I'm going to drill through both pieces of wood so that way when I bolt everything together, I have my holes lined up. I'm not going to be able to get all the way through with this, but I'll at least know where to go and finish on the other side. So I got them clamped together and we're ready to drill. Inch and five, what was that? Inch and one eighth. Speed bit. There you go. It didn't really blow out the back. Blew out a little bit, but not bad. If we'd have just sat here and drilled right through this without anything underneath, it would have made the whole back blow out and kind of look like hell. With the boards ready, we're about to assemble our heavy duty display shelf. If you want ideas about working with salvage materials, go to DIYNetwork.com. Coming up, this chapel may be small, but we're giving it a big transformation. Look at that, loving it.
And old blackboards aren't just for kids anymore. Oh, look at the precision. Perfect fit. We found some great salvage to bring character to a little chapel in the woods. And we're making some kick-ass display shelves out of material we found in an old convent school. Now we just gotta put it all together. All right, Josh, take one of these and put it on your side. I'm gonna give you a couple of uh, big old washers here. Mega washers, to be exact, from an old factory. It's like Lincoln Logs. Yeah, it is. Iron and wood frame is coming together great. Whoa! Nice. All right. This is going to turn out to be a great readaptive use for some chalkboards. Look at that, Josh actually measured correctly. Actually, that's amazing. Perfect. Not sharp. Whenever we design stuff, we try to make it different than anything anybody's ever done. So with this shelf, I really wanted it to have a little bit of a, a hard and soft feel to it with the wood and the iron and the slate chalkboard. So it kind of gives it like an industrial slash rustic feel. And now that it's in our shop, with some choice pieces displayed on it, it looks killer. I'm not sure how I'll feel when somebody buys this thing. We're heading up to the chapel in the woods, loaded with materials to make it look like it's always been there. Well, I brought up all that wood yeah, that I was showing you back there at the shop. We got the beams, we got the trim, we got some windows, we got the flooring, we got the railing on the inside. Why don't you guys give us a shot here and show us what's up? Yeah, sounds like we're gonna get busy. We're gonna lend a hand in getting it all together. We measure and sort the flooring. We use a miter saw to cut them to the right size. And a table saw for a few final cuts. These floors are gonna look so cool. Check out the tongue and groove, like the day they were made. In just a couple of hours, our small chapel has most of its flooring down. One more thing. Hey guys, a lot of times old carpenters, at least when I do salvage jobs, I'll find an old dollar and they signed it and things like that. So I've been doing this for a few years now. I'll just put our signatures on here and then the last board that's laid, put it underneath there. That way, when the next person comes back here to salvage this place in about 300 years, hopefully, they'll have a little denomination. And you'll put a date on it. Yeah, we'll date it. Choosing the right windows is critical to getting the right feel of a place. These narrow casements are historically accurate. All right, Matt, so we're just gonna throw this up in here and uh, put a couple of screws in it. Just did a pretty good job getting this all ready, man. Yeah, but I got the holes pre-drilled and yeah, everything. Right. That looks sharp, man. Sorry, I see some cuts there. Not bad, you're all right. Yeah. If uh, well, well, this whole building thing doesn't work out, you got a job on me, pal. <laughs> all right, sounds good. The Victorian trim is really nicely milled. Great detail. The solid old porch railing will really define the altar. Wood beams add structural integrity. And take your eye up to that cool ceiling. With that, we have the chapel ready to be furnished. The floors give instant character. The windows add to the early 20th century look and the beams add a sturdy feel and maybe even a little bit of soul. We're all proud of this one. And look at how it all turned out with the furnishings in place. Cool, huh?
Looks great. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much, Matt. Came out great, guys. Thank you so much. We really found the right wood for this project. You walk into this chapel, man, and it just bangs. It just looks like 1910 all over again. It's fun working with salvage materials, isn't it? It's different. It's much different. It's, there's no exact science of working with salvage materials. We had a great team of guys working out here today. We're able to pull everything together. We're able to take this new chapel and make it look old again.